Hello, good morning everybody. Um, happy Monday and uh, this is uh, my podcast for the week and uh, from this week I am going to video it because it uh, saves a lot of time for me. Otherwise I, I have to record it and then take it to um, iMovie and then from there I have to edit it and then I have to upload it. So it's, it's a lot of work and it's time consuming. So this is just a straight shot. I can record it on YouTube and just upload it and it's just that easy. So uh, technology is amazing. I um, love it. So the uh, for this week I'm going to talk about one of our favorite uh, topics, um, love. And um, last year when I was uh, on my retreat, 85 days silence in Pennsylvania, I had a very great experience that I gave some thoughts about love. When I was on the retreat, I had a, um, the owner had a dog, it's a German Shepherd. I love dogs, I'm a dog person and when I was a kid monk I had a dog called Lucky and he's a Pomeranian and so much fun. Uh, so one day, usually I finish my breakfast in the morning 7.30, between 7.30 and 8 o'clock and after I finish my breakfast I came out, I usually go for a small walk, it's like my uh, morning um, walking meditation. So I go to the end of the road and then come back, it's like a quarter of a mile. So usually Huey the dog follows me and it's a German Shepherd, white, pure white dog, um, big and um, stubborn. <laughs> and. Uh, so this particular day, and he didn't follow me, instead of he was just looking up the tree in front of the house and circling around and barking and uh, making a weird kind of noise uh, noises. So I, since I didn't speak and I couldn't ask what's up, so I went to the tree and I looked up and I circled around and I saw there was a a small kitty cat it was black. It seems not healthy. Um, seems like a um, unhealthy, sick cat. Anyway, so I went for my walk and alone. He didn't um, come with me. And I came back and I moved on with my practice for the day and then the next day I came out. Of course, he was guarding the tree and I felt really bad and I tied up uh, Huey and grabbed the ladder and went, um, climbed up and uh, I grabbed the kitty cat and I was the cat was a small cat, but it was really mad. And um, so I took him down and put him on the ground and he ran away. And then I took the uh, leash off of uh, the dog. And of course, <laughs> that wasn't a good move. And he just chased the um, cat. And so the cat uh, went um, under a um, car that he has, old car that he doesn't use. and. Um, so he was guiding there and so this happened like two or three days and then after that I think the cat has this nature that they know how to dominate the place or the environment. So that's exactly what the cat did and little by little, little by little, ran away, came back, ran away, came back and so somehow got really close to the house. And so one day when I came out I saw the cat was sitting on this chair there was a white chair, plastic chair, and he was um, he was sitting on the chair. And of course, Huey was there, and now Huey is okay a little bit with the cat. Um, he so the the owner of the property, the house, uh, John, and he bought food for the cat, and so he's taking care of the cat now. And um, but Huey 
So this is the important part. Huey, let him come out to eat and go and drink water or whatever the cat uh, to take care of his necessities. But then he has to go back to the um, his chair. And so Cat was allowed to be there, but only in that little space. So he has, uh, so he he loves the cat. Now he's starting to love the cat and give some affection and go and kiss him, lick him, and um, you know. Um, but if he's gonna go away, like for a um, sunbath or something, he would chase her. And so the cat had to come back to the chair. So I named it, of course, and I gave it a name. I called it Huey's Cornered Love. Sometimes when we give love and when we um, love somebody, we do the exact same thing. We corner them. And sometimes we don't realize it, uh, but we tend to do that. So I want you to give some, give some thoughts to how, when you love somebody, how do you do that? So I think it's very important to understand that we all like to love and we all like to be loved. And it's a very um, natural, Think for living beings, and um, so when Buddha talked about love, he um, in Metta Sutta, Loving Kindness Sutta, he talks about Mata Yata Niyang Puttang Ayusa Eka Putta Manurakhe Evang Pisabbhutesu Manasambhave Aparimana. So he says. Like a mother who loves her only child, you all have to learn to love all living beings, aparimana, which means unconditionally. So this is where I think our dilemma when it's come to love, because we sometimes become like Huey. We think that we give you this and that and thinking that you have the all the world and we say you are being loved you are being taken care of i have gave given you this and that so you have everything but sometimes we have we have to understand love goes beyond that and you can give a person everything but if you don't give that person freedom, the very thing that somebody needs, somebody expect from you. Maybe they don't ever expect all the materials, but the freedom. So this creates a friction and that's where the struggle comes in. So the to love someone without attachments, without um, conditions, it's possible, but we have to work on it. And um, it takes a little time because we are so used to the idea that when we give something the world, we think that they we are they are being loved, but in their world, it's not. So this is a struggle that I think young people go through and they feel like that they've been caged. So for parents, um, I don't want to talk about parenting because I know nothing about it, but this is where the struggle that I'm talking about. This is how I felt when I was a teenage monk and um, I had everything as a monk but I didn't have that freedom. I questioned things. And um, so then when I, the answer that I got was that I've been loved. But we all do, sometimes do not realize that we create these 
fences around our relationships. Whatever the relationship is, maybe it's your neighbor, it's your daughter, son, your husband, wife. But that doesn't mean that you just give them freedom to to do whatever they want to do. And you always um, give prompts and you always uh, show them the right path, right way and how to do things and you always give them remind, reminders. But at the same time, understand that they are building on their world. And when we understand that, I think it's, it makes a lot easier to love somebody um, unconditionally without setting up conditions. And so I think this is the very problem that we have in the world today with all these commotions that we go, that going on. We have fail to understand each other very well and it's a it's a very obvious question and there are a lot misunderstanding going on and when we have that we can't build a really strong relationship there is no trust and um, we have um, hidden agendas and when we have that, we fail to create that love that we want to see. But to see, the problem is that openness, it, the, the love just has to come naturally, freely. And I think we are lacking of that. Instead, we have this uh, something that we created, that something that we, you know, pretend that's like love. So it's, it's cornered, it fenced. So I think we have to go beyond that. And we have to look at the world just like you look at your children. And uh, the other day I was talking to a friend of mine, uh, like two days ago actually, and he told me that he's frustrated with, frustration with his teacher. And um, because he his teacher thinks he's been been loved but um, he doesn't feel that way his student doesn't feel that way and so the so filling these gaps understanding taking time to realize what went wrong and helps us to build a right relationship right kind of love right kind of attitude towards love and so love always starts here huh? that's where we feel but you have to remember, it starts here in the brain. There is a connection. So when Buddha talks about love, he always mentioned wisdom, panya, karuna, love, kindness, compassion has to be balanced. So it's very important to understand that. So the love is not just an emotion, irrational emotion. It's very rational thing to do. Love is the very first thing that we need as a humanity, as a society, as a culture, country, or a community. That's all we need. Love, love is all we need. And we talk about love always, and we, there, there are thousands of books written about love, but I don't think we have a, a clear definition of love. It's your definition, it's on your definition, it's what's important about love. It's not quoting somebody else, but we always can take other people's experience to a consideration about what you think about love and how you define it, what matters. So I realize in my definition that we sometimes tend to be like Huey and we cornered um, our loved ones, whoever we love and we think it as love but I think loving the world, loving someone, it takes 
a lot of practice. And so when we have that openness, when we learn how to freely love somebody, I think we can minimize, we can um, love the world unconditionally and uh, the peace and the happiness that we, the image that we have, the world to be, I think possible. It's not unconditionally love is a question that a lot of people have. It's possible but it takes a lot of work. So when we learn how to do that, when we give a lot of thoughts to it and we can act on it and it's a very practical matter. So I, um, I hope that I wanted to bring up this um, topic today because I always think about love a lot and I give a lot of thoughts to it and um, rather than becoming an irrational thought we can think it in a rationally and we can give it thoughts we can connect the, our brain and heart and understand it with, with deeply and then it will allow us to love freely and um, it becomes, um, it brings the happiness, peace to us and surrounding, so to the world. And so if we understand this, I think as the world, as people in the world, I think um, Peace is a possibility, but I think we have all these hidden agendas that we want to accomplish and that's where the um, difficulties, suffering and uh, friction comes in and it makes us um, not trustworthy and it makes, um, it can create so many difficulties and it can also create wars. Wars, name of love. There are uh, so many wars in the world. So I think it's very important to understand love, 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 love everybody every day and share your love with the world and uh, make sure that you have less expectations and I don't want to say don't have expectations because it's impossible but of course we can have less expectations. So when our expectations are less, the um, ability to love unconditionally possibility becomes higher. So when we understand that I think we can um, create a very lovely world, start with yourself, start with your family and start with your group, Sangha, society um, and then to the world and uh, so thank you for listening and um, peace and love thank you